Hello and welcome to my next playthrough. Alonzi. As you might say. But anywho. Hang on, I'm just gonna have a drink of pop here. He's not like. Oh. Ah. Some lovely pop there. This, this is a, a game based off the Doctor Who. Strong the 11th Doctor and River Song as they fix time and whatnot. Apparently, this was meant to be part of a trilogy, but I don't see that happening now. And especially after I wonder if they did do the trilogy, would they do it with Peter Capaldi? Yes, yeah, so I guess this game's already out of date. It's it's got the old Doctor, or the young old Doctor, as he as he was called, uh, Matt Smith. I would say really wonderful as the Doctor, very reminiscent of the the second Doctor. But also, uh, but also, you'd have this, you'd have this sort of a bombastic aspect of his nature, which is, which is a lot more like the Sixth Doctor, which is f funny enough. But yeah, he was a really good Doctor. Although I think his storylines are a bit mm, re repetitive. It came down to a lot of time paradoxes and convoluted stuff. Ugh. See, the trouble, trouble is with the Eleventh Doctor is that he's meant to be the, like this child incarnation. And in fact, from what we know now, he he was the, supposed to be the final incarnation at, at this point. So, I guess I guess he's sort of the Doctor having his last... having sort of a second childhood before he before he dies, presumably. And I point this out because I don't think that was communicated too well in the show. You see, Stephen Moffat, who ran the show, I would say he he's a good good writer, even a great writer. He's written some of the best stories, but I don't think character is necessarily his strong point. I mean, say what you want about the Tenth Doctor, you know, who frankly got a bit whiny, <laughs> you know, full of self pity and egotism. But you knew exactly who the Tenth Doctor was. And that's because Russell C. Davis, even though I could criti criticise him until the sun goes down, he knew characters. He could write characters. And I don't think that's Moffat's strength, necessarily. I mean, with the Eleventh Doctor, we're meant to get this idea that he's this, this, he's this dark, troubled fellow who's trying to hide it with this childlike uh, exterior. And that does come through in some really good episodes, and actually a lot, a lot, a lot of his run. But I'd actually put that down to, the, to uh, his character, uh, to the actor rather than the uh, showrunner's direction. And he's wonderful. I just, yeah. You know, granted, there are a few aspects about his run I don't like, like the catchphrases. You know, both eyes are cool. Oh, for, makes me want to cringe. But, you know, put it this way: there, there, there's this company called Big Finish. And they tend to do audio dramas with uh, the old do Doctors. They bring the actors back and uh, create new stories with old Doctors and the original cast. And I would love to see the 11th Doctor be, ta be handled by them. Oh, hats. Very important in this game. Well, actually, no, not really. But, uh, yeah, you collect hats. There are 40 hats. And, unfortunately, you can't wear them. And don't get me started on how annoying that is. Of course, the classic fairs, which uh, you know, it's like a bit of a snob here. It was actually one by the Seventh Doctor in uh, the Silver Nemesis, I, th I believe. Ah, like the Eleventh Doctor. I kind of wish he stayed for one more series at least, because I think Series Five was best, and I think he should have got. If we did series nine, no, oh, series eight, I'm losing track. Ooh, another hat here. But if, I think if he did series uh, eight, he could have left eight on a higher note than he did. Because Tom and the Doctor was such a crammed mess. It was like an entire series worth of plot lines wrapped up in one in one special. And. I think that's because maybe Matt Smith said he would, he'd stay on for a fourth series. 
Ah, uh, but it doesn't matter because uh, yeah, I'm really happy with Capaldi. Actually, I think I actually think Capaldi could be one of the best Doctors ever. I'm not even kidding. You know, I'll have to wait until his entire run is done. Or at least, um... I want to see more focus on him. You know, because, you know, the, the idea of the Series 8 was, I suppose, that the 12th Doctor was a bit unsure of himself. So, thus he stayed in the background. That, and I also think they were trying to make him more mysterious. But anyway, what I'm trying to say saying is, is, is Capita Capaldi, Capita Capaldi, is that uh, he has potential to be the best Doctor ever. I'm not even kidding. Old or, you know, old, new, classic. He's got sort of the grumpiness of the first Doctor. He's got the the attitude of the fourth Doctor. You know, a bit of suave of, of the third Doctor. If you don't know, Capaldi is a fan of the show. He grew up watching the first four Doctors, I would say. And I would say it shows, like I just said. That honestly, I think in terms of the fanbase, the first four Doctors are usually universally liked. I think some people say the first Doctor's a bit too grumpy, but that's another issue. But like I said, he's a fan of the show. He has this great overworldly quality. He's classy, he's grumpy. You know, it, it does feel like the kind of Doctor I like. Because <laughs> honestly, I like the older, grumpier Doctors rather than the... Uh, Young wacky doctors, but I think in, if I, th I would like to see uh, a story arc with the twelfth Doctor having a more dominant role. But anyway, in short, I really like Peter Capaldi. I think some of the issues is that sometimes I find it hard to understand what he says. When I watch those episodes, I turn up the volume so I can hear it clearly. And you might think, oh, maybe that's his Scottish accent. But I don't think it's just the accent. I think it's the fact that I sometimes just can't hear clearly what he's saying. But anyway, 12 is awesome. And he is 12. I'm... You know, the War Doctor apparently doesn't count. Oh, don't get me started on the War Doctor. I'm, I've never been a fan of that retcon. I made an entire video about it. Anyway, I've barely talked about this game, but yeah, I chose it because it's probably the best Doctor Who game, although that isn't a great achievement. Because the Doctor Who uh, franchise hasn't had that many good games. Oh, they've had some basic PC games in the past. I think there was some platformer. Uh, there's, there's some, some actually um, adventure games you can download for free off the BBC website. Although I think you have to be in a British country for that. Or like saying that. There are extensions you can get to web browsers. Which will actually give you the impression you're viewing it from another country. So I think you might be able to sneak in. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're a non-British non Hoovian, you might, be able, you might be able to sneak those in. Yeah. But like I was saying, other than this, I think this is probably the best Doctor Who game. I think it's other contender is there was a nineties F and V game. And I think what what put that game in such a high regard is the fact that they had Anthony Ainley playing an incarnation of the Master, and you actually got like new footage of him. And if you want to see this footage of that particular master, just look it up on YouTube. And of course I don't remember to turn on the subtitles because I'm such a dunce. It's something I'll give credit for about this particular adaptation of Doctor Who is the fact that it's sort of true to the um, Stephen Moffat era because it does have a non linear story with lots of twists and turns. This game, it takes place over four different time periods of London with four different threats the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Silurians, and the Silence. Oh, here comes the puzzle, and you got to rotate it. I swear, there's a system to this, although I've, I've um, forgotten it. Because you can see, as you twist, you sort of move the other one as well. Yeah, and I forget, the, I forget at this point, if you just hold left or right, they'll eventually line up. There we go, I'm just trying to work my way through it.
Oh, come on. Uh, this is even tricky on a hard mode. But even then, there's a system to it. There we go. Oh, the perception filter. I don't recall, I think that was overused during Series 6 and 7. I think it popped up every every other episode. Anyway, that's it now. But don't worry, it's far from being... It's far from being all over.